Hi folks, my name is Omkar Jagdare coming at you from Detroit, Michigan and today I'm going to talk to you about three fastest ways to get your green card in America. Before we get started, I would really appreciate if you can give me a thumbs up to the video. It allows me to reach out to more people just like you. So let's jump into the video. So three fastest way to get your green card in America. Now getting it through H1B, um, especially if you're an Indian, getting your H1B and then going through the employment route, uh, it's going to take uh, decades as a matter of fact for you to get your green card. So I talk anything, I'm not an expert on that. I just have a little bit information on this. I've read online, I've spoken to people, I have friends who have gone through these and that's where my knowledge is coming from. So I don't claim to be an expert. I'm just sharing information on what I know. All right, so let's talk about this. So number one is EB1A visa. Now there are, um, in, in terms of EB1, there are multiple EB1 categories, which is EB1A, EB1B, and EB1C. So now EB1A is for extraordinary ability folks. So this includes, you know, usually online they're saying like, you know, when I go to the USCIS website, they're saying like people who have won like Oscar, Olympic medals, or like Pulitzer prizes. Um, I think that is, a little bit exaggeration of how good you have to be because you know if this was the case only a few people will actually get a green card you know so uh, you have to be a performer you have to be the person who made that natu natu song recently who won an oscar you can't be that person you know only that dude will get an os uh, green card every year um, or green card you know that's the only way to get a green card but that's not true now, if you haven't, let's say, let's look at EB1, a, EB1 category and A category in terms of that. So you have to be an extraordinary, you know, basically a researcher um, or you have to be kind of like, you know, somebody who has a PhD or somebody who has done a lot of research and published um, papers. Let's say you have published papers. So usually, you know, you have, if you have about four published papers minimum, that's what I've heard for EB1A category. And usually about 50 or so more of, you know, if you have uh, citations for that, that usually qualifies you for something like this. So EB1A category, I would say maybe four published papers and about 50 or so citations. Now, if you don't know what that means, maybe go online and research a little bit more about what this means and study a little bit. I think that will help you understand. Now let's jump into uh, EB1B category. This includes outstanding professors and researchers. Um, I do have a friend, she got her um, EB1 uh, B visa through being a professor at a university. You know, she had a PhD already. She proved um, that she's working at this university and doing research there. So she needed an offer letter from this university to prove that she's working there and they want to sponsor that. C category, you have to be a multinational executive or a manager. Now, for example, let's say you have been working in India for like 10 years and you are coming here as a manager for Amazon, then you may be able to qualify for this. But you have to be in that position for a certain amount of time. You must be, uh, you know, withdrawing a incredible amount of income through your business um, or you are just at a very, very high level and you're doing important work for them. You're making leadership decisions for that company. And so that company has to prove that they are planning to employ you even after doing all of this process. So this, all these things fall under EB1 categories, folks. This is not an easy category to prove, uh, but it can be done. If you put in a good one or two years of effort into especially EB1A, I think you have a good shot at getting your green card within couple of years. So from the time you apply for EB1A visa, you can get it within a year, guys. It's really, really fast. If you have your file ready and you just submit it from that day, usually within a year, you should be able to hear it. I know people, they submit their file within 15 days, they have heard it from USCIS and it's approved. So after that, you just go through medical exams and stuff like that. All those things you have to deliver to USCIS and you get your green card eventually. So. That's number one. Uh, number two, fastest way. So EB1A is the fastest. There's nothing faster than that that I know of. So if I don't know anything, put it in the comment section. Number two is marriage-based green card. Let's talk about it. So usually it takes about six to 12 months for your 
temporary green card to arrive. So let's say you're married, you have to submit proofs to USCIS and you know that includes your marriage certificate. If you have other documents, you know, basically pictures of your weddings and stuff like that, everything that has like, you know, maybe your bank certificates or like your bills or your lease that you're living with your spouse. So these documents need to be submitted to the government. You usually get a conditional green card that has a condition of about two years. So you are on this conditional green card for two years. Once you complete those two years, basically USCIS will go through all your documentation again, look at your case and verify that this is a legal marriage and they will remove those conditions and they'll give you a 10 year green card, kind of a permanent green card. Uh, once that happens, uh, renewing after that 10 years is not a problem. It's very easy. They don't go and check if your wedding, if your marriage is legal and stuff like that after that. It usually happens for first two years. How about third way to get your green card the fastest? And that is EB-5 category green card. EB-5 is basically if you invest $800,000 or more into a business, into an investment where you are able to create certain number of jobs and that is basically an investment into America and that allows you to get a green card. Now there are a lot of funds who do that. There are a lot of attorneys who already have connection with businesses that can help you qualify that. But if you really see all you need for this is money and you don't need $800,000 exactly guys. Uh, the number fluctuates. It can be 900, a million. It can be a million and a half, depending upon which area you live in, which area you're planning to invest in. So things change according to the areas. Another way, fourth way is don't be Indian. If you're not an Indian, that just makes it very easy for you to get a green card. If you are an Indian guys, um, I don't know what to suggest to you, you know. Um, it's a pipe dream, you know, it's a pipe dream. It's going to take long, long, long time to get a green card um, because you see, there was something called an Eagle Act. Now I, I'm gonna go on a rant here, okay? So if you wanna stop watching the video, go ahead and stop it. So Eagle Act was basically what they did. They, the Democrats proposed a bill that was going to take that quota of 7% green card on every country or like the max you can get, a country can get in within, let's say there are half a million green cards. So only 7% of that are allotted to a country. That's what, you know, kind of example. Okay, I may not be right here. It's an example. So that's how much only you can get. You can't get more than that. So if you notice, there are hundreds and thousands of applicants from India, but for countries like Philippines or maybe countries like, you know, Korea, Pakistan, there are only a small number of people who are applying. So these numbers, you know, you can use here, but that's not happening right now because if they were to remove this limit, then people from other countries would also, the wait for them will increase because you know, the amount of green cards are limited every year. So the wait will increase for everyone else. So what Democrats did, they wanted to propose this bill into the house um, in the end of 2022. Here is what happened. You may be thinking that Republicans were the ones who denied this, but that's not really true. It was some Democrats who were lobbying in the system. For example, there were Democrats from Philippines uh, or other countries um, who are lobbying for those countries because there are a lot of nurses and stuff like that, nurses and people like that coming from Philippines to US. So if you understand, if you take this quota, then it might become four or five years for everyone to get a green card. Today, they, for them, it may be just one year to get a green card. So they were the ones who kind of denied, uh, you know, they were the ones who were kind of against that at that point of time. So you may be thinking Republicans were the ones who denied it, but it's not. And Democrats felt like there may be less chances of getting this bill approved. That's why they did not um, pursue this bill further in the end of 2022. So I don't know what's going to happen next. So to be honest, in my opinion, it's just going to get difficult. Um, you have to have now, it's all going to be on merit. So you have to be really, really qualified now onwards to get your green card faster. You have to get into categories like EB1A, EB1B or C. These are the categories that are going to give you fastest 
green cards going further oven visas you know are going to be able that those are the ways you're going to be able to stay in america without like a lot of restrictions um h1b and stuff like that it's going to be restricted you're gonna your hands are going to be tied it's going to happen so you can't complain you can't say oh this is hard this is that you just have to figure out different ways and be creative on how you can do the things you really want to pursue in america okay there are a lot of people doing that there are a lot of people on owen visa who are pursuing all the businesses they want to with that i'm done that's all i had for you today i'll see you in the next video all the best